Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Arroyo and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist located in Southern California. Today's very special video is the first in our brand new series, Psych in Real Life. In this series, we're interviewing members within the community discussing mental health related topics and how they apply coping skills in their own everyday lives. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so that way you can stay up to date with our weekly videos on mental health related topics and coping skills for you to apply in your own everyday life. Today's very special guest is Tamiko Brown Lee, a professional stunt performer in the entertainment industry. We're gonna be discussing how this current pandemic with COVID-19 has affected her profession and how she's been coping with all the difficult changes. I'd like to welcome our first guest, Tamiko Brown Lee, for our first interview of our brand new series, Psych in Real Life. Welcome, Tamiko. Hi, Gabe, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I know what you do, um, but can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about what you do as a professional stunt woman? Hi, my name is Tommy Cole Brownlee. Um, I'm a professional stunt woman. I've been doing it for about 10 years now. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I do everything from stunt acting to stunt doubling and motion capture as well. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So what's the difference? <laughs> Was that a stunt right now? <laughs> what's the difference yeah. between stunt doubling, stunt acting, and, and mocap? So stunt double is usually you fill in for the actor for like fights or falls or uh, wires, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we are casted by our skill and our height and body proportion, so how well we match the actor. So when we're subbed in, then it's like a very seamless stitch. So you won't realize that that's not the actor. Gotcha. So a lot of times it, they will cast you mainly off your ethnicity, your height, and weight, proportion wise. And a lot of times it's hair color. But if the skill supersedes what they need, then the hair color now just doesn't matter. And they'll just wait us. Um, stunt acting is if you see somebody coming in, throwing a couple lines, and then maybe getting shot in the face, you know, having dialogue, um, and then doing like a stair fall or getting hit by a car or something like that. And motion capture, as we were these special suits where they have these little um, balls on it that are tracked by a computer um, and multiple cameras that are set up in this place called the volume. Mm -hmm. and they take all of our movements and they can take us and create us into digital uh, creatures they can make us into monsters they can make us into like little like gnomes or um you could be this awesome robot so they can take our body mechanics and and then make most of it most of the time it's for video games gotcha gotcha and, and with, with all this work that you do in the industry is there something that we might recognize you from or something that you could share that you worked on well, um, so right now I, I work on a, a show when it's running. It's called The Rookie. I double the Asian actress. Being that I'm half Japanese and she's half Chinese, it, it works out really, really well. Her name's, um, well, her character name is Lucy, but mm -hmm. her name is Melissa O'Neill. So mm -hmm. I come in when I'm in town and available to work on that. Um, Movie-wise, um, I've been in, in the past year and a half, it's been once upon a time in Hollywood. I doubled um, Leonardo DiCaprio's wife nice. in the end ending scene. She was actually supposed to have a lot more action fight wise. I was supposed to engage with the, the taller blonde um, mm. lady that breaks into the house. Mm. And on the day, like it got cut because it just felt he felt like it felt a little forced gotcha. for the scene. Um, I worked on Infinity War. I was the double for Mantis. And so that's a, a really big one that I'm really proud to have on my resume. <laughs> and for motion capture, um, the biggest one that most people recognize when I say it is Halo 5. Mm. Um, I was uh, Kelly, I think Officer Kelly, I forget. I have the, the actual figure up on my wall. It was given to me from the stunt coordinator. Nice. afterwards and he was like this is you and Spartan cool. Kelly I think the name so it was myself and another girl named America Young so when she got uh she wasn't able to do it anymore I came in and, and so we kind of like half-halfed on it so those are some of the 
stuff that you might have seen. Yeah, yeah. Those are some pretty big names. You know, like for me personally, I'm kind of geeking out about the Marvel stuff. Um, so <laughs> I, like that's one of my favorite movies. And that's an amazing, amazing resume. Um, so you said Mantis in Infinity War. Was there any other Marvel stuff that you might have been involved with? I did the first season of Iron Fist. I was um, Colleen Wing's double, the one with the sword. So I doubled her for the first season. And then I was also the ghost character in Ant-Man and the Wasp. So I doubled her for all the like, the fighting stuff. And I didn't do any of the motorcycle. That was a, a different double because that was on a different unit. But I did all the, the other fighting for her in she's one of my favorites. <laughs> that, that, that's such an incredible movie and amazing fight scenes in, in all those things. But yeah, Ghost, that's a really, really cool uh, character to be able to say that you, you did the stunt work for it. That's amazing. I was so excited because to be uh, like a, a female antagonist, but she's not really an antagonist because, you know, she just doesn't want to die, but she ends yeah. up like beating up <laughs> Ant-Man and Wasp like several times. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was really cool to just be like we helped create this character's movements and we trained with her and she did a fantastic mm. job her name's hannah john mm -hmm. came and she really like amazing talented and just the sweetest person ever mm. but it was really cool when i go into like say target and there's this little funko like little pop characters and i'm like i was a part of the team that brought that character to life so that was really cool yeah wow yeah yeah i remember watching the trailers before that movie came out and i was so excited to learn more about that character and the cool scenes that we've seen and then the phasing suit like all of that is really cool what an amazing career and profession that you're a part of um how did you get into this oh man that's a very popular question so usually uh, everybody in the business has a specific skill set. Um, I've studied various martial arts throughout my, my life. I've done Muay Thai, I've done Wushu, like Northern Shaolin. Um, I love like the kickboxing stuff. I just, I think I just love hitting things. <laughs> and um, so I've been able to take all of that and kind of meld it into what I've, I've really kind of grown to love is the fights, mm. you know, like the kicking, the fighting and all that. Um, I can do some weapons as well which is all thankful you know i can thank the wushu guys for that um so my background is martial arts we've got everybody from high divers to professional motocross people to gymnasts former gymnasts are fantastic because they have a lot of great air awareness so we have all different walks of life that kind of come together and we're we're not like specialized but i want i don't want to say we're just one Mm. but we do tend to be more specialized. Like I do more fights, but I can also do wire work. I can do water because I have my um, rescue certification. Oh, wow. So I can do water work. I have driving. I've gone through like three of the Rick Seaman driving. I've done a couple of other like on this side, like BMW course and my motorcycle I ride. I have, I've taken a lot of classes for that. And so it's just, you just try to build this one specialty to be more expansive so that you're helpful on the team if you need to be put in different spots. Mm -hmm. So I got into it moving to LA. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Hey. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Yeah. You know, I, I appreciate everything that uh, the stunt performers do in almost all the movies that I love, you know, like you mentioned the, the Marvel cinematic universe, um, all the other action movies that I've been watching especially right now during quarantine, during this pandemic, I'm at home 24-7. Mm. So I've been binge watching all the Marvel movies, Star Wars, and all the other action movies. And I just appreciate so much of all the life that you guys bring to these movies. It's so cool. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I, I look at it and I'm just like, we, we work really hard and we're just kind of like the background um, people that just, come and do our job and then leave it's very mm -hmm. i like the anonymity of it that i can do whatever i want throughout my daily life and i'm not stopped on, on the street they're like hey <laughs> or they're like across the street like taking photos to your window kind of thing and i love that part and i love the physical aspect of it too and i love to see the stories and the characters get developed and come to life and yeah so i mean 
most of the time people don't realize that that's a stunt double because it's it's done so seamlessly it's amazing yeah i appreciate everything that everybody in, in the community uh within your profession does like that's what makes these movies so captivating and just bringing us in and thinking like yeah these people are really doing dangerous scary things to bring us entertainment right and the bar keeps getting higher and higher because you know we've got these groundbreaking like movies that come out and then everybody's like oh especially like john wick like oh my goodness john wick uh gung fu like they're taking out guns and he's flipping people and so every time something that comes out and we have to keep you know always elevating the game but we always try mm -hmm. to stay safe too while like trying to expand like the possibility of of these stunt scenes and fights and with that topping of itself, like movie after movie and the bar just rising, how do you like as a performer stay up to date with all of that? Well, it keeps us on our toes because we have to stay in peak physical shape, especially if we're on a long run of a movie. And a lot of the times we're not working eight hour days. We're working sometimes 16, 18 hour days, but we're doing it like five, sometimes six days a week because maybe production's a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. I've been on a show where I'm working like six, seven days a week and we're doing like 14, 16 hour days. And it's really hard because you got to balance the physical of not only like you keeping in shape, but keeping the injuries in check and keeping your diet in check. Wow. So, you know, um, mentioned it before, you know, the, the whole purpose of this series, A Psych in Real Life, is to speak with everybody and figuring out how they're coping or applying coping skills in their own everyday life. So with so, the current COVID-19 pandemic, you know, how is this affecting your career and how are you coping with this? Well, it's been a lot of like a roller coaster emotion, emotional ride for me, to be honest. Like at first I was like, ah, two weeks, no problem. <laughs> I've got this. I'm just going to relax. So I, I was rushed onto a plane. I was working overseas. Mm. Um, 10, 10, 30 AM. I'm at the studio mm -hmm. and we're cleaning up and everything. They're like, you need to like get home right now, pack your stuff, and get on a plane. We have a three thirty plane for you. And I'm like, wow, what? And I'm like, can I not leave like another, another day? Like I'm in the middle of work and I'm 30 minutes away from my flat. And they're like, mm -hmm. no, we need to get you out the travel restrictions wow you have to be out of here and the only plane we can get you on is a 3:30 flight and i was like okay i got picked up at 12 where they take the keys of the car the keys to the flat and they're like throwing all my stuff in the van going we need to get to the airport i'm like oh, okay so then i get rushed home i had been up since seven in the morning and i got back to la time because i was in london i got back at 9 30 p.m mm. and it's eight hours ahead in london so it's really like 6 a.m. Yeah. So by the time I like unpacked and got to bed, my time was almost 1 a.m. And I was like, I was like, oh, I don't even know what's happening, but I'm home. And they're like, oh, it's going to be two weeks to be fine. I'm like, oh, I could take two weeks break. You know, it's, I really needed this break. I've been like working out six, seven days a week overseas, you know, like just on the grind. And I was like, I'm just going to take a break. I'm just going to relax. Mm. My two weeks turned into now two months. So at first, I work out a lot outside of my house because I, I get more motivation just turning my brain off and just going to a class. Sure, sure. And it being taught and I could just focus on that. And I have the distraction of my phone, the TV. Oh, look, the fridge. <laughs> but now that they're all closed, I'm sitting here like, okay, now i got to figure it out. So I've been for almost a full month I didn't do anything I just baked a ton I cooked a lot which I love to do especially since I'm home yeah it's beautiful and then I was like okay well I'm just gonna give my body a rest I'm gonna take care of all the things I haven't been home for and I haven't been home for almost three years like mm -hmm. consistently wow I have stacks of paperwork everywhere wow so I set aside like little um to-do lists like, mm -hmm. oh, because I'm home, let's take advantage of the fact I'm home. Mm -hmm. Organize my bookshelf. I cleaned out all my clothes. I donated a bunch of clothes. I fixed out all my, you know, my files. I cleaned up my whole room. And then I'm like, 
still not back to work. Okay, great. Now what? Like my whole room's clean. So I was like, all right. So I started taking up Japanese again. So I studied that in high school and college. So I'm just trying to do little tasks that I know in when I'm busy that mm. I don't really make the time for. Yeah. So like reading a book, working on my Japanese, mm. <laughs> <laughs> organize all my files. And now, you know, since I'm home cooking, uh, but that only can do so much for you. Mm, mm. And I started not sleeping very well. Mm. So I was like, all right, I've got to do the physical aspect again. So I started running. I've been doing home workouts. I've been changing my diet with a lot of juicing and really just cutting out the dairy, the, the heavy foods for me is like beef mm. and a lot of the heavy carbs because I have gluten intolerance. So I just take all of that stuff out. So now it's working on not just my physical, but also my mental to yeah. keep both of them stimulated because I feel if you don't do that and you don't keep a good balance, you lose. Uh, for me, it, it, it was sleep because I was off. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So now I make a little like to-do list that I check off every day and I'm like, take off the trash. <laughs> but it's just it gives me something to look forward to like i feel like i'm being productive good, good. so i'm good. trying like it's a it's a it's one day i'm like super motivated and i'm like yes and the next day i'm like i don't want to get out of bed for mm-hmm. hours because yeah. i'm just like because i'm like oh it feels like groundhog's day now what <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that endless sleep <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, what day is it? Doesn't matter. I'm not working right now. <laughs> you know, you know, I think that that's really relatable to all of us right now. You know, we're at home and we're going in and out of emotions with anxiety, depression, the stress, not sleeping. Um, yeah, it, it's really hard. And I think you listed off some great coping skills, taking care of yourself physically. So with the exercise, uh, doing things that you normally can't do, just kind of keep yourself busy. I like um, your little to-do checklist. You know, I tell people a lot. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell people a lot, you know, do a checklist because even that small task is going to increase our motivation, make us feel successful, and it's a little celebration to keep us going forward. So I, I love that. That's a great example of a great coping skill. <laughs> I'm trying to be awesome like you, Gabe. Thanks for all the pointers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, you know, those are some great coping skills, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, with, with your career and your profession, do do we know, like, what this is going to look like when you get back to it? Because I assume uh, we can't practice <sighs> foot distance rule with what you do. It's going to be very interesting to see how the big heads of productions and the studios are going to figure it out because they've been throwing out, like, guidelines just to try to get the ball rolling where I've, mm. I've been kind of watching and they'll list like, well, it's either a stunt heavy show or no stunt. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And then they go, well, if there's stunts, then you have to have a select group of people that quarantine for 14 days before the show starts mm. and stays on that show the whole time. Wow. So it's a very interesting thing as I've seen they're like no fights. I'm like, oh, no. That's like, oh, you look at my resume. It's like, oh, I did a fight there. I did a fight here. Oh, no, I, I got thrown off a building. Oh, but that was a part of a fight. You know, it's like you, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. No fighting because it breaks the six-foot barrier. What are you going to do with, let's say, like, Legends of the Marvel, Supergirl, Arrow, like, NCIS LA, like, the cop shows even. Mm. Uh, you know, like you watch, you, you watch it for the drama. And part of the drama is the writing of, you know, trying to figure out this, yeah. who's bad and how do we fix this? How are we going to do fight scenes? Are we just going to yell at each other from across <laughs> the room and be like, I'm going to throw that at you. <laughs> you know, is it going to become swords and guns now? Like it's, mm-hmm. are we just going to not be able to arrest a, a suspect and put handcuffs on them because it breaks the six foot rule? I'm like, like, oh my goodness, like, what are we doing? And I don't know. I think there's talk of productions trying to like start up in Atlanta and Vancouver. I just, 
we have to figure out a, a way so that not all of that goes away. Where Where's that good balance? You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. where are we going to be able to find a good, ha- make everybody happy medium? Yeah. Because they were talking about taking out kissing scenes and, and any physical touching. Like, I don't really, I don't know. I just hope that we're able to come to an agreement because right now film in the United States has pretty much halted. Gotcha. I, I don't have the answer for that. And I really feel it's above my grade, but if somebody <laughs> were to pay me, like I'd really like <laughs> hard on figuring that out. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm kind of curious how our, our, as, as a department, our work is going to change. You know, because I'm used to, if when I'm home in LA, I'll go, let's say I'll work on The Rookie, and then I'll work on Stumptown, I'll work on 911, but I've jumped from set to set, mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm only needed like maybe two days here, one day there, so gone are the days of all of us stunt performers day playing on different shows, because now you're going to be quarantined to one show, so otherwise you're going to have to take us and quarantine us 14 days ahead of this one day that I'm going to work, and just... I don't know. A lot, there's a lot that goes on for stunts that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that even I don't, I'm not privy to because I'm the performer. I'm not the person in charge. Gotcha. gotcha. Does that help answer your question? Yeah. It gave, it gave us a lot of information. And I think, you know, just like <laughs> uh, eating healthy, um, just like a lot, a lot of the rest of the world right now, there's a lot of uncertainty with how, you know, the future is going to be a lot of what ifs and, and I'd imagine a lot of anxiety for, for you and your colleagues. And how are you coping with that anxiety right now? It's been really interesting. It's like been kind of keeping up on the news, but not really because I feel too much of it's not very good for my, for my soul. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I got yanked off a big production with the hopes of, oh, it'll be like two weeks, maybe a month. And now I'm like, are we going to go back anytime soon? Because I'm an American performer working overseas, mm-hmm. which I think might be harder. Yeah. Coming out of LA, being that big COVID hub like New York. But I'm not trying to look too far in the future. I'm trying to play it day by day. I, I'm, it's weird. I don't know if you noticed, but I like to kind of control things a little bit. And so not having the control and not knowing what's going to happen, let's say next month, like September, end of the year, um, it does bother me. But at the same time, I have to remember that I can't control that. So I shouldn't sit there and stress about it and, and worry and, you know, lose sleep over it. But I'm hoping the, as we open up, United States that the numbers go down and so we're able to get back to a new normal yeah. it's not gonna be normal anymore I just try to play for for me I try to play it day by day and just kind of keep my ears open and mm-hmm. do the research because yeah. right now they all they'll have like guidelines from Lionsgate or guidelines from like these uh um Swedish productions or you can look up the guidelines for Australian productions and trying to get an idea of how how they're coping mm-hmm. and seeing like, cause right now they're, they're trying to push for productions in those places as a little bit lower numbers. Gotcha. Film sets employ hundreds of thousands of people. How are we going to make 20 people on set at a time work? Cause you got lighting camera, you got the grips, you have the actors, you have like us, the stunt performers that art right there has like, you're in the hundreds yeah. on big shows. By the time you have two people in one scene, you've got like 40 people working. Wow. Yeah. I'm very, uh, I don't want to say privileged, but I'm very, I'm very honored to, to be able to work in this industry. And I hope that I get to keep continuing to work in this industry. It's been really good to me and I'm very proud of the work that I've done. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying not to get too anxious about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, absolutely. You should be proud of all the work that you've done. You've done an amazing job. Um, and, you know, to highlight some of the things that you said, you're talking about a very big concept that we discuss a lot in therapy of mindfulness. And I think you got it down and just being a moment today is, is all we have. And we should just be focusing on the here and now. 
So I, I don't know if you knew it or not, but you've been practicing mindfulness. You're a mindfulness expert. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to, to not, because I used to always be like, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? Um, what am I going to do next week? And what about this? What about that? And you can't sit here and be like, what if, what if this, what if that? Because every day something might change and you have to be adaptable to it. Because I used to get mad, like, no, it's not working. <laughs> and then I just realized, I'm like, that's such a wasted amount of energy I just put out there yeah. or something that you can't control how this person's going to drive down the street. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or how the weather's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just, um, it's like baby steps. And so I'm glad that I'm doing good things for my health. Thanks, Dr. Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, speaking of coping skills and being mindful and present, uh, especially with the social distancing, I've seen you and maybe a lot of other viewers have seen you in some videos on YouTube. Uh, the main one that comes to mind is, is a video called Boss Bitch Fight Challenge. Uh, can, you, can you tell us about this, this video? Yay. <laughs> yes, it was, um, it's a, it was like a little brainchild of Zoe Bell. She saw a couple previous virtual fights. Um, one of it was done by um, a good friend of mine, Aaron Tony, um, who just one day was like, I want to start this fight challenge. And so he on Instagram messaged like me and he was like, can you see a video of him punching the camera? And I was like, oh, we're going to play virtual like fighting. And he's like, yeah, just send something back. So I sent like um, one that I get hit in the stomach and I kind of smirk and I do a spinning hook kick. And so from there, he basically stitched together this fight, even though we're all at home or outside. And he made this cool concept that a lot of people were like, wow, that's so neat. So we have people from France, like the France, I think the European Stunt Union took, created their own. And then you have a couple of other people that created their own. So they took this really cool original idea and they've expanded on it. And so Zoe saw like a few of them and was like, I see some girls in there, but I want one that's all badass boss bitches. <laughs> and I was like, so honored that she sends out an email. I'd worked with her several times and she sends me an email. She goes, would you like to be a part of this? And I got it and I was like, yes, absolutely. I'd love to. Anything with Zoe Bell, she's basically somebody I look up to in my career. I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. I'd love to. So a little backstory on Zoe Bell. Some people are starting to get to know who she is, but she, she came in person big job that she did she doubled xena and xena princess warrior back in new zealand because that's where she's from and then her huge um claim to fame that a lot of people have seen is kill bill so she doubled uma thurman wow and i love that movie and she did some incredible work like wire work and just blood everywhere and it's amazing she actually i think got pretty hurt on that show but still carried on through the end of production wow. and so i think she became a muse of, of quentin tarantino i mean he saw her and he's like she's amazing she's been a part of quentin's movies ever since kill bill um she's also known for being on the the, the hood of a car in death proof as they're driving and she's like wow i mean that's all practical that's mm -hmm. not being screened or anything that was all done in real life so when she reached out, I was like, yes, please. So her her boyfriend, Jacob Horn, uh, took all of our videos. A couple of us had to, like, we reshot. Like, I reshot mine because I had originally done an axe kick to my, my beautiful camera on my phone several times. <laughs> and she was like, well, you know, I love it, but I want to save the axe kick for Rosario Dawson because she's got this famous move that she's done. Um, it's so be like an homage to her character. Nice. I was like, okay, great. She's like, yeah, so if you don't mind doing a different video, um, that'd be great. Uh, how's your jumping sidekick? I'm like, oh my gosh, I love doing jumping sidekicks. Let's do it. So I sent Zoe three of them where I actually did kick my camera 
like if you continued past that edited part you'd see the camera flip out of frame and go <laughs> to the ground and you hear us laughing like oh <laughs> so i said maybe i'll like post some of the the bloopers so i yeah. sent it to him like, what do you think and she's like oh it's badass perfect so they rushed to get it done spliced everything together she had contacted um people that she knows and they happen to be like all the celebrities and other stunt doubles that have really close connections with other celebrities and they were like i would love to so it became i think it's 16 stunt women and 19 uh, uh actresses wow. that are known for doing action mm. and they were like i would love to and they made this six uh less than six minutes like a five minute video and it just went viral it's just it's so cool because i was like wow and yeah i'm really i'm really honored to have been and one of the teen stunt women that she was like i would like you to be a part of this with me yeah so i was very i was very like honored <laughs> Yeah, as you should be. That's a big deal. And it's an amazing video. So if, if our viewers have not seen that video yet, it's going to be linked in the description below so they could see how badass this fight is. Um, who else is in this video? Oh, man, it starts off with Zoe, right? She's at home like, oh, I am so bored because <laughs> we can't see our friends in person. She's like, but I can see my friends. So she does like a front kick to the camera, which then like goes to um, Lucy Lawless, who she has, uh, she had one of her um, Xena uh, props that she hits the camera with. And it kind of like spirals onto there. I think it goes Drew Barrymore and then Juliet Lewis. Oh, Tara Mackin was at, like in between, she's another uh, good friend of mine, stunt, for, stunt woman. She's really awesome. And then I get by a weighted hand of Juliet Lewis. <laughs> and then I kick Rosario Dawson in the back. And it feels really awful. I was like, sorry, Rosario. <laughs> sorry. And then that's her axe kick, which looked really cool. I think we've got like Halle Berry, Scarlett Johansson, Margot Robbie, uh, Daniela Rua. And then her double, like Kimberly Murphy, you've got... Um, Scarlett Johansson's double Heidi Moneymaker who does that really awesome badass uh down the stairs reaction she goes over the wall down the stairs oh yeah yeah so I was like oh she goes yeah that hurt a little bit I was like <laughs> I was like dude that was so cool and then her sister later on Renee Moneymaker she does like the whole lap back flip over in the in the yellow suit and then she like head butts the mm -hmm. camera it's so cool but it was so cool to see like every one of those stunt performers, except for maybe, I think, I don't really know two of them, um, but I've heard their names. It was really cool to see my friends and like we're playing virtually and yeah. we're all beating each other up yeah. for fun. <laughs> yeah. We're not promoting violence, we're promoting <laughs> fun yeah. because nobody's getting hurt. <laughs> Poor camera. <laughs> actually i think i have some scrapes on my camera um yeah it was just something to to get you out of the house get mm -hmm. get you going and doing something fun that takes your mind off the news mm -hmm. takes your mind off of like oh it's fratter sadder monday tuesday day mm -hmm. right it's like so yeah it was really cool to see how much it spread like i've seen articles on like buzzfeed and um i think access hollywood had it on tv and my friend in okinawa sent me this little snippet in japanese covering <laughs> the you know the stunt women's we and it was so cool because i could actually read a lot of it and he's like oh that's you I'm like this is so cool we went all over the place yeah and it was cool to bring the light on to not just the actors but the stunt performers too so i thought that was really cool. yeah that's super cool, super cool. once again it's an amazing clip so haven't seen it be sure to look at the link <laughs> below in the description and there's another video the first one uh, from Tony that's also going to be in the description but this this is amazing work that you guys are all doing um, within the industry and in the stunt industry and just in entertainment in general 
And I think that you're right. Like with these videos, it's inspiring people, even during these difficult times. Like I've seen so many other videos come from these original concepts that people are just getting engaged. And even though we're social distancing right now, we're missing each other, we're missing our normal, normal things that we normally do, we're still able to do something fun. And it, it's thanks to videos like this and thanks to the amazing work that you, Tamiko, and, and the people <laughs> are doing. So thank you so much for what you guys do. It's so cool to see the little video that we, you know, we do at home and, you know, get all stitched together. And then you see, I got a couple links sent to me. They're like, oh, look at this. We created it. Where it's been like, I saw the little kids one, which was super cute, <laughs> where they had like the little kids like throwing stuff around at each other. And then Zoe sent me one. Uh, well, there's a group of us. We, we call it the boss bitch light thread. She sent us the, you know, the clip of her family back home. Like they did one where they're like, you know, throwing like stuff at each other. And I was like, oh, that is so cool because it kind of brings out the fun and the creativity that, you know, a lot of people like maybe they're not thinking about right now because they're at home, like upset, not working, like trying to figure out how to make ends meet money wise. Like, yeah, it's, it's just something to take your mind off it and go out and enjoy the life that we're given and, you know, make the best of it. Yeah. I love it. I love I'm that. Happy. Yeah. I, lo <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I think it's amazing. Um, uh, thanks again for taking the time and meeting with us uh, via zoom and, and doing this interview uh, for everybody that wants to, to see your stuff or wants to get to know more about Tamiko Brown Lee, all of her information is going to be in the description below. So make sure to check out her amazing work on our YouTube channel, IMDB. Just check out all the links below regarding Tamiko. Oh, thanks Gabe. I try, you know, um, I've always had this, Thing in my life where everything that I do I want to make sure that I can show my grandmother and I want her to be proud mm. you know that's my my standard like yeah. okay if I'm gonna do this like if my nana finds out is she gonna be ashamed mm. is she gonna be like oh uh, uh -huh, <laughs> like this is my super granddaughter <laughs> so my whole life I've kind of I've kind of always had that in the back of my mind whatever I did I just wanted to make my nana proud my mom proud so being that I'm like half Asian we've kind of got this prideful thing in the Japanese culture mm -hmm. so I never wanted to bring shame to the family name you know <laughs> what I mean so um yeah it's just been you know it's really cool that I, I worked super hard to kind of find my own niche in this business mm -hmm. um there's not a lot of uh Asian performers in the in you know United States in entertainment as stunt performers I, but in the last five years you've seen there's more, more asian actors so that mm -hmm. means there's more opportunities for us so i've been really fortunate that i got in when i got in but I, my my gold standard in just everything in life is what am i doing to make sure that my family's proud mm -hmm. you know so I'm really happy that I've been given all these opportunities. People have trusted in me and people have given me the opportunity to not only out see out succeed where I thought my abilities were, but to also push me to be a better person and a performer. Yeah. So it's so cool when I look I look back on my ten years of stunt performing, like how many opportunities that people have like, well, I don't really know her, but I got a recommendation from somebody else and so I'm just gonna give her give her a try so I'm like thank you for all the opportunities thank you for the cool hat that I have on my wall <laughs> <laughs> um yeah my brothers are proud of me because at first they were like you can't make a living doing this like like come on and now they're like my sister she does cool stuff I'm like hey <laughs> yeah so it was great I mean I did go to college and I did did a get a degree but I'm not using it right now <laughs> but yeah so that's that awesome awesome yeah I, I, I love <laughs> I love it and all that thank you so much I, I'm sure your family's absolutely proud of you I mean I don't know if my vote counts but I, I'm proud of what you do this is amazing oh, 
yourself. Uh, once, once again, our very first interview of our brand new series, Psych in Real Life. Thank you so much for taking your time out today. Tamiko Brown Lee, all of her links and all of her information are going to be in the description below. Make sure to check her out. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our weekly videos on mental health related topics and coping skills for you to use in your everyday life. Thank you.